We, why do I think that the Chevy Volt is a hoax? Well, first of all, let's examine what it is. It's what's called an extended range electric vehicle with a 40 mile range. So it has a 40 mile all electric range, which it runs in all speed ranges as a regular electric car. Then a gas engine generator comes on if you drive more than 40 miles to run the car directly. And you also charge the thing, you know, from regenerative braking and you could even charge it from the generator. So it, it basically continues on, even though the, the uh, gas genset runs it, but it's entirely using the electric motor for traction power. Now, it, the problem with General Motors' theory of the Volt is that they haven't acknowledged that past electric cars are successful. So with the, right in front of us, we have the 40, the 100 mile range Toyota RAV4 EV, which is a 100 mile range electric car and electric only range. And there was the EV1 that had 140 miles range. Now, if General Motors were serious about the Volt, first of all, it would acknowledge that the past electric cars were successful and had you know, sufficient range. Secondly, every one of the successful electric cars that were in the past with over 100 miles range started out with lead acid batteries. Now, they didn't start with nickel metal hydride or anything else. They started with lead acid, the Honda EV started with lead batteries and was upgraded later to nickel when they became available. The Toyota RAV4 EV started with lead batteries and was upgraded to nickel metal hydride when they became available. The Ranger EV started with lead acid batteries and was upgraded to nickel metal hydride when they became available. The EV1 itself was designed with lead acid batteries in 1989 and then was upgraded to nickel metal hydride when they became available. And in, in lead acid form with good Panasonic storage battery, uh, lead acid batteries, it had over 100 miles range. That's over 100 miles range. The, if it had a, a gender set on it, it would be a 100 mile range EREV. Now that, those existed and General Motors tried to kill them. They tried to crush the memory by killing every one of them and crushing them all, dismantling the uh, few museum copies and not letting people use uh, show them, but they did exist. And the fact that General Motors doesn't acknowledge that these extended range electric vehicles uh, did exist shows that they're dissimulating, shows that they're not serious about making the Volt. Now, they're, for two years, they've been, they've been talking about the Volt, for two years. And yet, if they had started, you know, re reinstituting the EV1 line or building the 40-mile uh, range electric car and, and adding a range extender, they would already have thousands of them on the road right now. So why would they be waiting for a lithium battery? No one has ever made a successful electric car that's gone more than 100,000 miles in a lithium battery, and not even 50,000 miles. So why do we believe they have to wait for the perfect battery? 40 miles range, uh, lead acid is plenty good for that. Nickel metal hydride will give you 140 in the EV1. So why are they waiting for the perfect lithium battery in 2011? Notice they say November 2010. Well, the fact is that they seem to be waiting for the price of gas to come down. And even with it coming down a little bit, we can see the, the proof of that. In September 28th and GM is touting its electric future. So it's, it's claiming that it has all these plug-in cars and of course it has no plug-in cars for sale. So how serious is GM? Well, price of gas drops about a dollar a gallon and two weeks later, all of a sudden, and we're now talking about the joys of buying a, a GM crossover with 24 miles per gallon. Now this is more realistic because this is something they actually have for sale. But there is no mention of electric cars in this one because the gas prices are down. So how serious is General Motors' commitment to things like the Volt and the plug-in hybrid? Well, not very sincere. Same issue, we see Dodge you know, still has pickup trucks for $16,000. Uh, and they're, they're trying to sell these pickups. Now these are the same pickups they used to sell for $25,000 to $30,000. Uh, and, you know, would have given an additional five or, or $10,000 in, in gross margin to the dealer and to the car company. See, and here's a, here's a GM pickup for $18,000, you know, that could have sold before uh, for the mid-20s. So we're looking at five or $10,000 uh, less 
and on a, on a few sold a million pickup trucks, there'd be five, five or ten billion dollars less in gross revenues. And we, we see diesels. We don't see any electric cars. We don't see them mentioned. Here we see Power Chevrolet plug in the power. But of course, uh, we're talking about the Malibu and the uh, Tahoe Hybrid, which you can't plug in. So basically, it's just a, it's just a come on. And it, they guess they haven't gotten the message that they don't have to worry about electric cars anymore because gas prices are coming down. So General Motors and its in the, in the, the headline of the Chevy showroom just abandons all talk about electric cars and now it's 24 miles per gallon is, is good enough. <laughs>